So today we're going to talk about email etiquette. The word etiquette has more to do with like manners and how your email sounds. So this lesson is not going to be about using your email program or things like that. Um, this will be about how your email should sound. Let's read this part and you'll see what I mean. Email etiquette refers to how you as students construct your emails to professional individuals including teachers, principals, and other adults. Over the past few months, some of the student emails I received appeared way too informal or unclear, so here are some guidelines when sending an email. So you want your email to sound professional. You want to sound your email to sound educated, okay? So I'm just going to take you through sending an email in each part and how it should look and sound, and I promise you, you will get a lot of compliments from teachers when it sounds like this, okay? So let's just go through it. The first thing is a subject line. So I'm going to pop over here to my email program and start a new email, okay? And the first thing, obviously, is the to field. So let's say you're sending it to somebody like one of your teachers, okay? Your subject line should be very clear what you're writing about. Leaving it blank is not appropriate, so you should never leave the subject line blank, okay? The subject should be, what is this email mainly about, okay? A lot of people put their entire sentence here and send the email. This is just a subject line. What's the main idea of your email? So you could do something like one of these. Maybe you're emailing about the homework or you're having trouble with an assignment or you're emailing about an absence, okay? That's fine, that makes sense, okay? These might not be that great if you just type in question because anything, it, that can mean anything. Don't just type in class and probably not what's up, okay? So just think about what the main idea of your email is and then type that in. So let's say my email, my uh, main subject is, um, I have a question about the homework, okay? And so that's my main subject, all right? Now, we're ready to go down into the body of the email, and that's right here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and delete my signature so you don't see that during this video, so it's not in the way, okay? So we're going to go into the body of the email right here. This is where your main stuff is, and you should always start with what we call a greeting. This is just like if you're writing a letter. It should always start with addressing the person you are emailing respectfully. It could be like this, Dear Mr. Sanchez, or Dear Mrs. Martinez. And if you don't like the word dear, it sounds too creepy to you, then just their name, okay? But not, hey, Sanchez, what's up, Mrs. Martinez? Hi, teacher. Those aren't respectful. So let's start out. Dear Mr. Sanchez. All right. We're ready to go. Now, this one's interesting, okay? This is called well wishes. This part is not absolutely required. However, it's a great idea to do because you will be seen as a respectful and overall nice person. Think about how you like to be treated. So what if you started your email with something like one of these? I hope you're having a great day. Or I hope you're feeling better. Maybe you knew they were sick or something. Or I hope your week has gone well. Just a quick little sentence. I call them well wishes because that's what you're doing. You're wishing them well, okay? Not, not something like, what's up? What's happening? How's it going, okay? A well wish. So let's say, dear Mr. Sanchez, I hope you're having a great day. And just, just simple, just to tell them you're thinking about them before you get into what you want, okay? And then we get into the body, okay? The body of your email is where your main communication is, okay? Here are some tips. Be very clear on what you're trying to communicate. Use complete sentences. Try to use correct spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Keep it simple. You don't have to write several paragraphs. If the bulk of the message is too long, sometimes the re recipient might not even read it because it's too long. Okay. Avoid sarcasm or attempts at humor. Okay. Both are seen as unprofessional. Don't use texting language like LOL or WDY. Don't use texting language in an email. And don't use all caps, or it comes across as yelling and shouting, okay? So let's, let's type a quick email. Dear Mr. Sanchez, I hope you're having a great day. The purpose, or let's just say, the reason I am emailing you is because I am a little confused about this evening's homework. Are we supposed to to do all of the Ed Puzzle videos or only the ones you mentioned in class today. Okay, there we go. Pretty easy, right? That's the body. 
And then the closing. Closing is just simple like you're writing a letter. It's just like your greeting. It should always end respectfully. And always be, first, be sure to use your full name after the closing. For example, sincerely, Roger Smith. Or regards, Roger Smith. Or thank you, Roger Smith. Okay, Not, not any of these. These are unacceptable. See ya, Roger. Peace out, Ra Ra. Take it easy, R Dog. Okay, remember, you're talking to your teachers. You're being professional, not to your friends, okay? So let's say, um, and you can even start with thanks for your time. Sincerely, uh, Roger Smith. And what does help too is if you tell them what period you're in first. Period. What period you have that teacher for? It helps them a lot since they have so many periods. That would help if you can remember that, okay? And then finally, we proofread. Like your email is done. And sometimes I go ahead and put a space right there. That doesn't matter. But it looks nice, okay? But proofreading is very important. Just like tests, once you're finished with your email, you should always go back to the beginning and check over it. It's a great idea to read it out loud to yourself in order to get a better idea of how it'll sound to the recipient, like the tone. It'll also help you catch any errors in spelling, grammar, punctuation, or anything like that along the way. So you go back and you say, let me just read this out loud to myself. Question about the homework. Uh, Dear Mr. Sanchez, I hope you're having a great day. The reason I am emailing you is because I am a little confused about this evening's homework. Are we supposed to do all of the Ed Puzzle videos or only the ones you mentioned in class today? Thanks for your time. Sincerely, Roger Smith, first period. Okay, I just read it out loud to myself. I didn't catch anything in there I should change, so it sounded pretty good. Make any changes you need to. When you have proofread, okay, let's just look at these email tips real quick before we send it. Always remember that email is a permanent internet record kept by the school. Don't put anything in your email that you would not be willing to have the entire school hear about, okay? No personal stuff or anything like that. No inappropriate stuff. I'm not going to publish it, but you might need to show it to someone, okay? Think about whether you would be willing to say it to your mother or father or grandmother or grandfather. Don't send an email when you're upset or in a hurry. If you're upset about something, wait until you're calm, thinking clearly, and have time to put thought into it. If you want, you don't have to send this yet, okay? You don't have to press send. You can click schedule send and tell it when to send, say maybe tomorrow, or you can just close it like this. And it'll save it in your drafts folder, okay? If you click drafts, it'll be there, okay, for you to open and continue later on and send, okay? So you may just want to give it some time, okay? Use a professional email address like your school email address. An email address like gummybearsforever at hotmail.com is not professional, right? So you use your school email address. And finally, give the teacher 24 to 48 hours before you contact them again, okay? A teacher will usually try to get back to you in a hurry, okay? But don't wait just a few hours and then reply and say, hey, did you get my email or not? Okay, give them a little bit of time, all right? So I think we're ready. We can go ahead and click send, okay? All right, and so that's it, okay? You got a good idea of what email should sound like. These were the main things. Your subject line should be very clear. Your greeting, dear Mr. Sanchez, Ms. Martina, Mr. Sanchez, well wishes, I hope you're having a great day, and so on. The body of your email should be clear. You got all of that. The closing should be sincerely, regards, or thank you, okay? Proofread it to make sure it's right, and then you remember our tips that we just went through. Hopefully that gave you a good idea of email etiquette. This is what your email should always sound like. Don't be surprised if I reply to you with this document if your email doesn't sound like that, just to give you a reminder, okay? This is great stuff. This will help you come across very respectful, very professional, very educated. All right, you guys are amazing.